Okay, in this video I want to talk about deriving the arc length formula that you see in calculus. So, you may have run across this formula that the length is the definite integral from a to b, and then we have the, the square root of the quantity, 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So again, this is if you're talking about a function of x, and you'll see that's what I'm using. So let's just talk about deriving it real quick. It's not too terribly bad. So, okay. So there's x and y. Suppose we've got some curve, and we want to measure the length of that. So let's make the left endpoint, we'll call that our point A. Our right endpoint, we'll call that the point B. I think it's sort of almost lined up. Let's make it lined up now. Okay, so again, all we're talking about when we're doing arc length, all you're doing is, you know, imagine you've got a piece of string or something that lays over top of that curve. The arc length, all we're simply doing is just imagine taking the string and pulling it, you know, pulling it tight and then just actually measuring that string in whatever units you happen to be using along your x-axis. That's all we're talking about when we're doing arc length. So the way that we're going to approach this is it's the same way when you, you, when you do almost anything involving integration. We're just going to chop it up into a bunch of uh, pieces. So we're going to start off with our x-axis. We're going to chop that up into n pieces. So let's just chop it up into some, some parts. Each of these is going to have the same width, so each of these intervals will be a width of delta x, again, just like you, you commonly use when you set up these types of, of, of uh, examples or, or, or come up with these types of formulas. So the left endpoint A, I'm just going to label that as x sub 0. My right endpoint, that's going to be x sub n. So this would be the point x1, this would be x2, dot, dot, dot. Generically, let's call this point x sub i minus 1. We'll call this point x sub i. So x sub i minus 1, x sub i, dot, 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 up to x sub n. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at points on the curve associated with each one of these x-coordinates. So we've got all these points. Okay, so far so good. We've got all these points, and the way that we're going to approximate the length of the curve, so we're going to start by approximating the length of the curve. Let me label these. This is going to be the point P sub 0. This would be P sub 1, P sub 2. This would be the point P sub i minus 1. This will be the point P sub i up to the point P sub n. So again, just points on the curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to approximate the length. So again, L is going to denote the length. So the length is going to be approximately equal to... Now let's come up with something here. How would you approximate the length of this curve? What might be a natural thing to do? Well, to me, if somebody said approximate it, probably what I would do, you know, if I had a ruler or something, for example, you could just connect each one of these points with a straight line segment, each one of these points with a straight line segment, and then you can add up the lengths of all of those straight line segments, and if you add up the length of all of those straight line segments, that would give you an approximation to the length of the curve. So that's the basic idea of what we're going to do here. Okay, so I'm going to let, let's do some notation. Let's let so I've got like these absolute value bars, p sub i minus 1, p sub i. This notation, we're going to let this notation be the length. That's going to be the length of the line segment. That's just going to be the length of the line segment connecting, connecting the point p sub i minus 1 to the point p sub i. So all I'm saying here is this length right here between p sub i minus 1 and p sub i, I'm going to denote that length. I'm going to denote that length by that absolute value of p sub i minus 1 to p sub i. Okay, so that's going to represent the length. So the true length of this curve, well, what could we do? We could just simply add up the lengths of each one of those straight line segments. That's what we said we would do. So I would simply sum up from i equals 1 to n. 
of, again, p sub i minus 1 up to p sub i. So again, if you start at i equals 1, that's going to give you the length of the first little line segment here. And eventually, we'll go up to uh, i equals n, and that would represent the very last length. OK, so this formula certainly you know, makes sense here, but we haven't really, you can't really compute with this formula. So we need something more user friendly is the idea. So let's come up with something a little bit more user friendly. And again, all we're really doing is we're just going to work with this little formula to make it, make it better for us. OK, so one more thing as well, right? We could simply represent, you know, p sub 0, that's a point on the curve. And we know it's coordinates. That's going to be the points. Let's see, we plugged in x sub 0. And you're going to get some, some value out y sub 0. Of course, you could have used f of x sub 0 as well. P sub 1, well, P sub 1 would have coordinates x1, comma, y1, whatever that y coordinate happens to be, etc. You know, the point P sub i would have coordinates x sub i, comma, y sub i. So let's think about this length. Let's think about this length going from P sub i minus 1 up to P sub i. What is that length? Well, we know how to find the length of a straight line segment. It's just, we're just going to use the distance formula. So let's use the distance formula. And the distance formula, we just take, so we would take the change in the x-coordinates. So the change in the x-coordinates, that would be x sub i minus x sub i minus 1 squared. Plus we would do the same thing with the y-coordinates. So that would be y sub i minus y sub i minus 1 quantity squared. And then we take the square root of that. So that would be the length of the line segment from p sub i minus 1 to p sub i. Again, you're just using the distance formula, or, you know, it's really just the, Pyth the Pythagorean theorem is what we're using here. OK, so that's that length. Whoops, p sub i. OK, so notice that x sub i minus x sub i minus 1, that's just that's going to be our value of delta x, remember, because we made that, that, that the width of those intervals the same. Each one of these intervals have width delta x. Now, the y values, we can't just say, you know, um, so, so what I'm saying is I'm going to replace this part with delta x. We can't just replace y sub i minus y sub i minus 1 with delta y because the change in y, well, that's different. That's different depending on your points. We fixed it so that the change in x's were going to be the same. So I'm going to introduce some new notation. Let's just let uh, delta y sub i. That's going to be the difference between y sub i and y sub i minus 1. So just some new notation that I'm going to throw in here. So now I can rewrite this part as delta y sub i. So I can rewrite my formula p sub i minus 1 to p sub i. I can write that as, well, again, x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. We said that that's just equal to delta x. y sub i minus y sub i minus 1. That's going to be delta y sub i using our new notation squared. <clears throat> OK, so again, so far so good. So we still need a better way to compute this. And kind of the magic, or, or, or I guess maybe the key the key thing to recognize is now to use the mean value theorem. That's what's going to tie it all together. So we're going to use the mean value theorem to tie it all together. And to, to remind you of what the mean value theorem says, in case you have forgotten. So the mean value theorem says, well, let's look at it. I'm going to label this as the point. Um, let's just label this as... Let's label this as x sub i minus 1. So this will be the point x sub i minus 1 comma y sub i minus 1. And this will be the x coordinate x sub i. So this will be the point x sub i comma y sub i. So remember what, uh, what the mean value theorem. It says if you connect these two endpoints, well, what is that? That's just the slope of the line connecting those. And we could write that as... Uh, change in y, we could do y sub i minus y sub i minus 1 over x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. So again, that's just the slope of the line. We're just doing change in y over change in x. We could rewrite this as f of 
x sub i minus f of x sub i minus 1. Again, over x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. Or using uh, our, our notation from a second ago, we could write this as delta y sub i over delta x. Okay, so again, I'm just rewriting the slope of this line in three different ways. That's all I'm saying. What the mean value theorem says, though, it says there's some point in there. We can call that x sub i star. There's some point in there where if you take its derivative, it has the value of that derivative is exactly the same as the slope of the tangent line. So what it says is the slope of that the slope of the line connecting the endpoints, which all three of these represent, we said that there's somewhere in there where the derivative evaluated at that point x sub i star uh, will be equal. Okay, so that's what the mean value theorem says. So the mean value theorem really just relates a derivative to an average value, a change in y over a change in x. But this is what we can use. Um, I'm going to use actually this part and this part. So, okay, so we've got that there exists an x sub i in between x sub i minus 1 and x sub i, so that the derivative, so that f prime of x sub i star, that equals, well, delta y sub i over delta x, and we can rewrite that by saying that delta y sub i is going to be equal to f prime of x sub i star multiplied by delta x. So this is going to be where the mean value theorem gets used. We're going to replace our delta y sub i with this expression. All right, now we're getting close. OK, so really, let's just go back and do that then. This p sub i minus 1 to p sub i, this length, we can now rewrite that as the square root of delta x squared plus we said delta y sub i, we could now replace it with this expression. So we've got f prime of x sub i star multiplied by delta x quantity squared. And now we can just simplify this a little bit. So we've got delta x quantity squared. Notice we've got another delta x squared here. So I could factor that out and be left with 1 plus f prime of x sub i star. And again, this part is being squared. I need one more bracket there. And if we take the square root of, the, of delta x quantity squared, since delta x is defined to be positive, because we think about that as being a length, we can just simply pull that out as delta x. And then we would be left with 1 plus f prime of x sub i star quantity squared. And of course, we pull the, del the delta x over to the right-hand side. So we end up getting 1 plus f prime of x sub i star squared multiplied by delta x. OK, so again, this expression now that we just found, that represents the length that represents the length of this line segment connecting p sub i minus 1 up to p sub i. So now we are almost there. Let's backtrack one more time. Because we said the length was roughly equal to the summation of all of those line segments. But now we've got a new expression here. So I can replace that. I can say that the length. And how do we make our approximation better? We make our approximation better by using more and more line segments. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation of i equals 1 to n, again, of these line segments. But we just found a formula for that, which was this. So now I've got 1 plus f prime of x sub i star. That's squared multiplied by delta x. And now, as we've seen using our, our, our this, this is a Riemann, you know, a Riemann integral. And this turns into the definite integral from a to b of the quantity 1 plus f prime of x squared. 
our delta x turns into a dx, and lo and behold, we have finally uh, produced that arc length formula that we set out to do at the very beginning. So, okay, so I definitely showed quite a few steps here. I think I tried to fill in as many details as I thought were really necessary. Um, but again, there's really not too many key observations here. I, this is what I like about you know this this definite integral because all you do is you take something and you just break it up into bunch of a bunch of little simple approximations. Well, what do we need to do? Oh, it'd be nice if we had line segments. Well, how do we find lengths of, of line segments? Oh, I know how to do that. Length, lengths of line segments are easier just using the distance formula. Okay, fine. So we produce this this little formula. Again, the problem is how do you how do you use it? Well, again, this is the magic of the mean value theorem. You use it all the time. Again, the mean value theorem relates a derivative to a change in y and a change in x, which um, are, are, are you know it's something that crops up all the time. So, again, just a little refresher on the mean value theorem in case you'd forgotten it. And then it's just kind of replacing that. And then again, lo and behold, once you take the limit, you end up getting the definite integral. So. Okay, um, I hope this helps. Again, hopefully it makes you appreciate where that formula comes from. You're not just memorizing it anymore. You know, if I just saw this formula, I would think, why on earth is that the arc length? So hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight and helps you understand it all a little bit better. So, all right, um, good luck. And like I said, I hope this helps you.